Pliny the Elder, B. 23 CE, Novum Comum, Transpidane Gaul now in Italy D. August 24, 79, Stabia, near M. T. Vesuvius, Pliny the Elder, Latin, Gaius Plinius Secundus, was a Roman savant and author of the celebrated Natural History, an encyclopedic work of uneven accuracy that was an authority on scientific matters up to the Middle Ages. Seven writings are ascribed to Pliny, of which only the natural history is extant. There survive, however, a few fragments of his earlier writings on grammar, a biography of Pomponius Secundus, a history of Rome, a study of the Roman campaigns in Germany, and a book on hurling the lance. These writings probably were lost in antiquity and have played no role in perpetuating Pliny's fame, which rests solely on the natural history. The natural history, divided into 37 libri, or books, was completed, except for finishing touches, in 77 CE. In the preface, dedicated to Titus, who became emperor shortly before Pliny's death, Pliny justified the title and explained his purpose on utilitarian grounds as the study of the nature of things, that is, life. Heretofore, he continued, no one had attempted to bring together the older. 7. Pliny the Elder Scattered material that belonged to encyclic culture, in Kiklios Paideia, the origin of the word encyclopedia. Disdaining high literary style and political mythology, Pliny adopted a plain style but one with an unusually rich vocabulary as best suited to his purpose. A novel feature of the natural history is the care taken by Pliny in naming his sources, more than 100 of which are mentioned. Book I, in fact, is a summary of the remaining 36 books, listing the authors and sometimes the titles of the books, many of which are now lost, from which Pliny derived his material. The natural history properly begins with Book II, which is devoted to cosmology and astronomy. Here, as elsewhere, Pliny demonstrated the extent of his reading, especially of Greek texts. By the same token, however, he was sometimes careless in translating details, with the result that he distorted the meaning of many technical and mathematical passages. In books 3 through 6, on the physical and historical geography of the ancient world, he gave much attention to major cities, some of which no longer exist. Books 7 through 11 treat zoology, beginning with humans, then mammals and reptiles, fishes and other marine animals, birds and insects. Pliny derived most of the biological data from Aristotle, while his own contributions were concerned with legendary animals and unsupported folklore. In books 12 through 19, on botany, Pliny came closest to making a genuine contribution to science. Although he drew heavily upon Theophrastus, he reported some independent observations, particularly those made during his travels in Germany. Pliny is one of the chief sources of modern knowledge of Roman gardens, early botanical writings, and the introduction into Italy of new horticultural and agricultural species. Book 18, on 28 techniques such as crop rotation, farm management, and the names of legumes and other crop plants. His description of an ox-driven grain harvester in Gaul, long regarded by scholars as imaginary, was confirmed by the discovery in southern Belgium in 1958 of a second-century stone relief depicting such an implement. Moreover, by recording the Latin synonyms of Greek plant names, he made most of the plants mentioned in earlier Greek writings identifiable. Books XX through XXXII focus on medicine and drugs. Like many Romans, Pliny criticized luxury on moral and medical grounds. His random comments on diet and on the commercial sources and prices of the ingredients of costly drugs provide valuable evidence relevant to contemporary Roman life. The subjects of books XXXIII through XXXVII include minerals, precious stones, and metals, especially those used by Roman craftsmen. In describing their uses, he referred to famous artists and their creations and to Roman architectural styles and technology. Influence perhaps the most important of the pseudoscientific methods advocated by Pliny was the doctrine of signatures, a resemblance between the external appearance of a plant, animal, or mineral and the outward symptoms of a disease was thought to indicate the therapeutic usefulness of the plant. With the decline of the ancient world and the loss of the Greek texts on which Pliny had so heavily depended, the natural history became a substitute for a general education. In the European Middle Ages many of the larger monastic libraries possessed copies of the work. These and many abridged versions ensured Pliny's place in European literature. His authority was 7. Pliny the Elder 7. Information and partly because his assertions were not information and partly 
7 Pliny the Elder 7 unchallenged, partly because of a lack of more reliable information and partly because his assertions were not and, in many cases, could not be tested. However, Pliny's influence diminished starting in the late 15th century, when writers began to question his statements. By the end of the 17th century, the natural history had been rejected by the leading scientists. Up to that time, however, Pliny's influence, especially on non-scientific writers, was undiminished. He was, for example, almost certainly known to William Shakespeare and John Milton. Although Pliny's work was never again accepted as an authority in science, 19th century Latin scholars conclusively demonstrated the historical importance of the natural history as one of the greatest literary monuments of classical antiquity.